as a documentary filmmaker, there's a few pieces of gear that never leave my kit. And the reality is, this whole discussion between gear is everything and gear doesn't matter needs some nuance. Especially if you're a new filmmaker, the next five purchases you make, outside of your camera, main lens, and tripod, can make or break your kit. So let's talk about being wise, because they could either make your kit a joy to use or a frustrating mess. If you happen to have photosensitive epilepsy, I recommend that you skip the next few minutes of the video because I'll be demonstrating specific lighting components in my setup. Any good cinematographer will point out to you that a scene is comprised of multiple pieces of lighting all interacting to form a cohesive scene. The first light that I'm going to bring on for you is a small practical LED lamp that actually serves as my nightstand and bathes my background in a deep tungsten orange glow. The next light that I'm going to bring on is a small rig LED panel that I'll speak about in a moment and is actually sitting just behind the doorway to the closet. Its job is to offer something slightly opposite on the color wheel to that tungsten light. But of course, I'm still in shadow as the subject of the scene, and I need to bring on a light to fix that. Now, everything else is perfectly lit by my Aperture Amaran 200XS. This is a 200 watt bicolor LED panel, and it serves as a perfect key light for this roughly 12 by 12 room that I'm currently filming in. Now, to soften up that light, I'm using a 37 inch softbox from Godox attached to the Bowens speed mount ring on the Amaran light. I find that this is the perfect size softbox to travel with because it packs down perfectly into my Pelican 1615 air case, which I'll be talking about in a later video. The goal for me this year is to take you behind the scenes on a number of documentary shoots. We'll be exploring the art of high fidelity audio, the art of light, and the art of fermentation and you'll get a backstage pass to all of these experiences if you stick around on the channel. One thing I want to mention before we move on is how having a key light makes interview shots repeatable. Having a key light in an interview means that as long as you light your subject separately from the background, you no longer have to balance between cloudy and full sun in post. And that minimal color correction can save you hours of work. The next light I want to talk about is a RGB WW panel from Small Rig. In fact, it's the one that's just behind me here, providing some blue light onto the wall. I think it's incredible that we have these small multicolor fixtures that we can stick anywhere. But the reality is, I've had a few issues with this particular light. If you go look at the BTS footage, you'll see that it disconnected quite frequently while I was trying to set up the whole shoot. And that's frustrating. So I hope that Small Rig can fix this in a future firmware update. I've left some recommendations for similar lights from Aperture down in the description. The reality is the Citus Link app and my Aperture Amaran 200XS as a package deal best anything that Small Rig has been able to ship up until now. And so I would much rather recommend an integrated light system to you. But still, these small RGB panels are incredibly valuable and the utility of them shouldn't be overlooked. Perhaps even more important than being seen is being heard. And as a former radio producer, the Handy Recorder series of products from Zoom was a staple in my kit. Fast forward to this year, and I have a Zoom F6 field recorder that never leaves my bag. This little recorder is a mobile production powerhouse with the ability to record up to six microphones simultaneously. It's perfectly happy both in the studio and in the field. If I had one criticism, it might be that the preamplifiers are a little bit sterile, but of course, you're listening to them right now, so you be the judge of that. You're currently listening to my Heil PR30, 
which is slightly below the camera angle, running directly into my Zoom F6 field recorder at about 35 dB gain. Not bad if you ask me. Now, of course, while we're talking about audio gear, you're going to need a great microphone. And I love my Heil PR30. I also have a couple of other Heil microphones in the studio, including my Heil PR40. This microphone is a fantastic location and studio kit. It served as an extra third microphone when both of my PR40s were occupied in the radio studio, and it now goes with me on location with a simple mic muff. It's very easy to use. It's highly directional as it rejects about 40 dB of all sound from the rear. And of course, it makes your voice sound amazing. The last piece of kit that I want to recommend for documentary filmmakers in this new year is actually performing a critical job on this shoot right here. I'm talking about the tentacle sink. It's a bit expensive, I admit, but having proper time code across all of your recording devices makes recording incredibly easy. For instance, we're recording the audio for this shoot on the Zoom F6 using Tentacle Sync to jam the time code into this device. And because I'm also using a Tentacle Sync on the camera, I'm assured that the time code has perfect lock, not just for the internal recordings made by my FX3, but for the external recording that is in ProRes RAW currently being made by my Ninja Ultra. So for the first time, I have an effortless sync in post where all of my recording devices have the same centralized time lock. If you're a documentary filmmaker, I can't understate the importance of this, especially if you have a separate audio operator. What this means is you leave your audio recorder running all day. Audio is cheap from a storage perspective and provides the transitions that you probably don't even know you need in your film later on in the edit. Then, throughout the day, you can turn the cameras on and off to capture the moments that you need with the knowledge that you always have time code lock based on your audio track. So pick the device that'll be running all day, choose that as your master time code lock, and then sync everything else to it. It's simply a drag and drop process in post. So there you have it, the five pieces of gear that never leave my kit. These items are imperative to how I function on the daily and they're critical elements of my documentary style. Let me know what you think about this down in the comments. Are there pieces of gear that you consider to be critical in your kit? I'd love to hear about them. I'd love to try them out. So of course, leave me a comment, like, and subscribe. And of course, stay curious.